Hey y'all, Edward here from Gamma 2018. Happy to be joined by good friend and publisher, Clay Ross from Capstone Games. Thanks, Clay. How are we doing, man? Yeah, doing well. You? Doing great. How's the, I, uh, how's the I, I say con, but it's a trade it show. It is a it's trade an event. show. So how's it been going for y'all? This has been phenomenal. We're at the Pepper Mill in Reno, and uh, last year was at Ballet's in Vegas, and it just felt kind of empty there, um, and then this year it's just it's packed. It's, oh, it's it, I have no frame of reference, but yeah. it's it's it feels like Origins as far exactly as size. Exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, right? there's so much foot traffic out there, and just a lot of good conversation. It's nice to get retailers and distributors, and obviously the publishers out there, all under one umbrella to network together. This is the event that everybody in the industry kind of comes together and just reconnects after a full year because there's not really one event like this that happens. And so. last year, afterwards, you were like, dude, you have got to come to yes. this. And I was like, really, you think so? And yes, he was He was 100% correct. <laughs> because like you said, it's the only time of the entire year in which you get retailers, publishers, distributors, media, and not everyone pushing product to the consumer. And so it's a chance to get everybody in a relatively casual environment in which to, well, make deals and, and so on yeah, and so forth, just, right? It's networking, like you said, and, and, and there are tons of deals that are made and it's, it's, it's exciting. It's, yeah, it's it, just a, it's a start to the year. It's the start of the board game season and that's, it's exciting. I mean, yeah. It, re it really is. And I think start of the board game season, even though here we are mid-March, that's exactly it. Ahead of, you know, con season beginning, whether, yes. you know, starting with heavy con and going from there, from there to all the way, well, now PAX Unplugged, right? Yeah. So we've got all those shows coming up and some people are showcasing, hey, this is what's coming out at Essen. We haven't really covered that yet. Um, so we're more focused on what's coming out sooner than later. So. so speaking of which, we have the estates, or as all of our viewers and listeners will know it as, Neue Heimat. Correct. So, so this is the second edition of Neue Heimat known as the estates, right? Yeah, this is the estates. Um, we ha it's Neue Heimat in uh, the North American market would not... <laughs> Too well, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> as much as everybody because likes the because names matter, right? It does, and you got to think of it from a, 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 a total market view of, of of somebody that doesn't know anything about Capstone Games or is new to the market. They're going to be very intimidated by new. How do you, I don't know how to say that. Right. And and how, so so how, can, like, how can you yeah. sell something that you can't even pronounce? Yeah, right. It's very difficult. So. Uh, we wanted to make it more friendly, more approachable, just like in the Simply Complex line is trying to do. And uh, it's a great fit. And I'm really excited with how this project is progressing. So you said friendly. This is not a friendly game. Approachable. Sorry. Maybe gotcha. I should use okay. that Okay. All right. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah. So approachable from yeah. a just retailer being able to sell to the public? Exactly. Thing? That okay. and just more accessible to a, a, a wider age, age range. I know the name doesn't really have an effect on that, but just doing that to cater to the Simply Complex line is what we're really focusing on in the same vein as, as the Climbers did last year. So uh, we're going to continue that with the estate. So, okay. So obviously you it's still in development as far as graphic design and artwork and all of those things. So we don't have that to show. We have some assets that you're working on yeah. that we can show. But as far <clears throat> as the gameplay, it, is anything changing as far as that goes? Uh, there's n not, uh, no, the, the rules are the same. There's, okay, so with the estates and the Weheimit, there are variants that people, some groups play, like we were just talking about earlier. Right, as far as you could either play with the faces up to where you can't see it, faces mm -hmm. to the side to where it's always visible, stuff like that, right? right? So we're going to be very clear in our, our rule set that um, when you place a floor cube, that you can look at all the building or all the cubes underneath it. So there's essentially no hidden information on that. Uh, and another one is uh, your money in this game. Um, you just can't put it underneath the table. You can have a stack of it, so somebody can just kind of guesstimate on what value. You don't have to reveal that. So to them. nobody can ask you to count your stack, or they can ask, but you don't have to do so. They yes. can just kind of eyeball how much money you have exactly. to be able to gauge their bid. The same thing that. with when you do your illegal earnings underneath the game board. That's going to be the same deal as well. So. Okay. All right. So, but rules-wise, pretty much the same, except 
another thing, you guys are taking out all the blank rubes, correct? Yeah, that's correct. That is a rule that I just, I cannot stand in this game. And it's, I talked with Klaus, uh, the designer, Klaus Zock, and he is like, I don't know why we put that in there. We need to get it out. And I was like, hey, we are on the same page with this one. Let's <laughs> awesome. Do that that so, makes that really easy because yeah. that essentially here, even though it's an approachable game, yeah. it is a very cutthroat, very tough, very mean, very somewhat opaque, heavy bidding game or auction game. Absolutely. And with the zero value roofs, essentially you lose your turn just because a random draw came out. Oh, I lose my turn. And that it's not, doesn't, it's, it it's not a modern mechanic. That's a really good way of, of wording that and, and how that feels. It just doesn't, it feels old. And yeah, it, it feels dated for yeah. sure. So we we'll just want to get that out of there okay. so everybody can have a turn kind of thing. And graphic design wise, or I should say as far as artwork wise goes, you're going a little bit more from like cityscape to like lakefront to kind of describe that a little bit? Um, so we are still holding it in the city. Um, the game board is going to have the same shape. And okay. Kind of a long rectangle. Right. You've got the three rows of buildings uh, for those that are familiar with it. On the left side, you've got um, this like uh, skyscraper, big buildings. You got a big one-way street that's like five lanes or something like that. We're still working on the concept. Sure. With it yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we want to make sure that the players know where to place the mayor. Okay. Um, and then you've got the estates that you're building. Um, it's kind of like this construction zone, and then you got the river that separates this natural park area all the way on the right with a nice little lake at the very end. So as your eyes pan down this board, you go from real busy to like a construction site, then a beautiful nature preserve, and then the guy's hanging out on his boat in a lake. <laughs> it's just like, nice. it makes awesome. the, it's just a really cool panoramic view. Which, so. all, and this always killed me with this game, much like the climbers, here it looks kind of like this, this child's game to where it's just building block <laughs> it, type stuff it and it's the same thing and here we uh, have always said it's the most brutal auction game ever created that right? is that is 100 percent true on that i agree with you on that yes so simply complex <laughs> but brutal but too really that, that that's the uh the the uh you know simply complex colon but really kind of brutal <laughs> Can we put that on there? <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, so time frame on this, because I know folks are going to be really, really excited to finally, for those, because it's been hard to get. Yeah, it is. So this will be our Essen release. Um, we will have it available at Essen. Um, one of the things that we're doing to it is making it colorblind friendly. Okay. Um, and we were uh, reached out by our distributor partners and retailers that they love the climbers, but some customers are hesitant because of the colorblind issue. Mm, and okay, fair, that's fair happened. Point. You know, I mean, yeah, it is a fair point. And it's like, okay, what can we do? I, I take this information. I'm not going to ignore it. You know, I want to apply that to our games. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Right? I, I mean, you're trying to sell copies of the game. Yeah. It just makes sense. So we're going to do some silk screen images around the floor cubes with different patterns for the different colors. So players that have that that colorblind yes. issue, right? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, can still play the game and know uh, what what color it truly is just based on the shape that's on the side of the cube. That way, because this game, when you play it, you know, you don't want to be asking, you know, hey, is, what is that one over there? I'm kind of looking at that floor cube. <laughs> then people kind of know like this, oh, he's, what, he's, he's going after the blue ones, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 right, so, sure, for sure. It's just stuff like that that I want to incorporate. And um, we, because of the production costs of this, um, we would have to do a print run that is substantially higher than we've ever done. So that means that leaves realistically one other option, which is, of course, yeah, Kickstarter. So exactly. This will be our very first Kickstarter. Um, and there's no way to, for, basically, if we didn't do Kickstarter, mm -hmm. we would throw all of our capital at it for this year um, and launch the game and, and basically print it to what I want it to look like. Okay. But the problem with that is, what if it's a miss? I've got all these copies. Yeah, there's still going to be a market out there that want the original game. They're going to buy it. Sure. But, you know, that's only a, a fraction of this total print run size that I'm looking at doing. So, so it's an unnecessary risk for the company because uh, yeah. which 
a poor business model if you put all your eggs in one basket and it goes under. I mean, you do this. I, you do done. this for a living now. You're yeah. full time. Then so. there'd be no more capstone games. So right. Which, done. which so. I imagine folks would be <laughs> upset about. I would be bummed because yeah. obviously you go back into our catalog, find games that we love, and <laughs> make them available to the masses, which we appreciate. So, yeah. <laughs> so basically, with the Kickstarter, I mean, we're looking at. Um, at using and, and I've been talking to, to distributors about it, and mm -hmm. they understand. Um, it's it's uh, w what I think is going to happen is with Kickstarter these days. It's amazing. Um, I think that it's a free marketing tool essentially. You know, you put something on Kickstarter, and everybody knows about it. They know all the information because it's listed on. Well, the good right. ones they're all listed on there, and you can reach out with comments, and it's just. It's transparency, pretty much. Okay, so, so so two questions on yeah. that that come to mind first off. Is this a new model for Capstone, or is this a one-off, or is this going to become the norm? This will not be the norm, I guarantee you that. Okay. So. Um, this I, I this is why Kickstarter is great, is because there's a project that I want to do, but it's so risky for me just to do it the traditional straight-to-retail method um, that, hey, we got to really really hedge your bets here with 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 Kickstarter and that's that's the tool and, that, and that's yeah. exactly what Kickstarter is there for yeah. I, I imagine right and the second thing is you said this is an essence release and you're talking about Kickstarter which means right around the corner question mark absolutely um, we are nearing the completion date with um, the artwork and um, we actually got a guy working on the video right now for the Kickstarter so we're gonna have a 3D view of the game and how it plays and everything. Okay. Um, but the Kickstarter will release on April 11th. It's a Wednesday, and we're gonna run it for I think 23 days. It'll end on May. There's a the first Friday of May is when it should end. So. Okay. And delivery then right around us in time this year. Yeah. Um, I've been working closely with the factory. This will be done at Panda. Um, they do a phenomenal job. Their quality. Is, I mean, everybody knows their quality. Sure. So um, again, top notch components here. And um, it should be done around uh, like late August, so it will be available at Essen. But also here at Gamma, um, we're talking with retailers to get them an idea of what we're doing. And a lot of them are really happy to, and pleased that while we are releasing this at Essen, we're still going to have a U.S. release at that same time so they can join the party. So, so you know. it's not a after, after Yeah, they don't have to wait. Fact, oh, right. man, everybody's at Essen, and, and these games are so great. Yeah, I can't get it for another couple months. That's the worst feeling, especially for a retailer who's trying to capitalize on that. Sure. So we're going to be able to offer that to everybody at the same time. Cool. So. All right. Well, and you know that gives me plenty of time to do a playthrough video of uh, the estates as well. So I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we should have um, the prototype components are coming in, and um, we're basically what's going to happen is the Kickstarter is going to launch. Uh, we'll be following through with that for the, the time that it goes through. And then in May, we have a couple weeks to gather all the information, understand what kind of print size we're going to do, and then go to the factory from there. And then it's uh, smooth sales, hopefully, to the... Uh... So actually, one other question then on the Kickstarter aspect is, I mean, Kickstarter backers at this point, feel I almost feel, are conditioned to expect stretch goals. Mm -hmm. So how is this going to be done? The stretch goals are essentially what I want to do with the game. There are some fun ones that I've that I'm okay because, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, to basically the what I want to do the silk screen images on mm -hmm. the side that is the ultimate thing I want to do with this game just to okay. make it colorblind friendly. Plus, it looks great. Um, we have to hit a certain dollar threshold to make that happen. That's going to be the big stretch goal. There. Okay, All right. I've got and if we hit that and I and I hope we do. Um, and if we go above and beyond that, then we're going to start talking some exclusives to Kickstarter backers. You know, there's there's some things that I've got. These are not rule breaking abilities because that's the thing that I've always mentioned with Kickstarter is when you start throwing in promo cards and hey, you get this extra character that does this, it completely derails the gaming experience. Okay, so you're not changing the core game no, then with any of you, these stretch goals when you, or anything. Yeah, and I hope we can get to that point where we, we release those stretch goals um, that are exclusive to Kickstarter um, because they're, they're going to be stuff that you're like, okay, I'm really glad I backed this Kickstarter because it, A, it's exclusive, but it just makes the game. So is it just cool little upgrade type stuff? 
more or less. I mean, you're hedging your bets here. You won't let it. Yeah, I'm trying to goad you into. I'm trying to pry <laughs> it out of you here, man. Yeah, it's it's some some things we're still working on. And but so it it doesn't affect the gameplay. So if you don't back the Kickstarter and you end up getting I'll a give retail you this. version, I'll give you this. Majority of them will not affect the gameplay. There is one that. I'm working with Klaus right now on something a little special for the okay. game, All right. and this would still be a Kickstarter exclusive. So okay. um, this one would be much after the fact, after all these other exclusive things that I've got lined okay. up for it. One last question then that comes to mind. You mentioned that retailers are going. This is going to release to the U.S. and uh, Essen yeah. around almost identical time frame, yes, right? Exactly. So you mentioned Kickstarter exclusive. Does that cut out the retailer, or are you going to have a retailer pledge to where they can? So, if people, whoever out there doesn't like Kickstarter or doesn't or misses it or anything like that, they can still get the Kickstarter version of this game from their retailer, from the local yeah, we're going to have a retailer, or whether pledge. it's you know a, a game surplus, say for instance. Yeah. So any retailer. Um, we're going to work through that. We're going to have a retailer pledge on there. So okay. retailers can still get the Kickstarter exclusive. However, people that don't back the Kickstarter um, and they they can either get it through the retailer right. or um, whatever the number of uh, Kickstarters that, that back this game are, is, and if we get to those exclusive goals, that's all we're going to print for those, and we're not going to do more than that. So later on, as if you know, if, speaking if, hypothetically, if this game does really, really well, and we have to reprint it again, those exclusives will never be printed. Okay. There's no need to print those again. I mean, because of the price point that we're looking at doing the game is expensive, right. and then including these this free stuff is going to be increasing the cost of the game. Too. Okay, so, that makes sense. So so help them so the 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 public, the Kickstarter backers are helping Capstone, so your way of replay, re returning that favor is to give them these exclusives. Okay, we did it together. Awesome. If we do it again, we got it off the ground. We're good and we're just going to do the normal version going forward. Yeah, but without that extra right, stuff. Right, yeah. right, right. So gotcha. That's, cool. That's the goal. Um and uh, we'll see how it goes. It's, it's nerve-wracking, but at the end of the day, um, the game will be made. It's just a matter of, is it going to be colorblind friendly? Uh, is it going to have this extra stuff that I want to put you know, in there? And, and it's only due to cost. It's not due yeah, it's to holding due to a carrot out in front of people's no, faces. No, that's, that that's exactly. I, I don't want to do Kickstarter because my marketing and, and business background is not formulated for that. I mean, I'm, I'm straight to retail business. It's, that's how we've been doing business this entire time. And uh, and I, I think that channel has been working really well for us. It's just, hey, this is a little bit pricey for what we're looking at. So, okay, cool. Good yeah. deal. Awesome, man. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, even though I have my version of Neue Heimat, I'm anxious <laughs> to check out the estates plus whatever little extra goodies you're giving us uh, for the Kickstarter. Yeah, so good it stuff. should be a good thing, and I'm excited for it. So. Cool. So uh, the date again was? April 11th. All right. So check out the estates, Capstone Games. So Neue Heimat 2.0, or second edition from Capstone. Thanks a lot, Glenn. Appreciate Thanks it, so Ron. Appreciate it. Cool.